What's up, Facebook? How is everybody tonight on Monday night? Everybody doing good? I'm gonna share this in a couple groups real quick. If I can get it to come up here. What's everybody up to? We're live, building my audience. Here we go. All right, let's share this in a couple groups. Wanted to talk a little bit. I've been reading out of the book The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Um, actually, been taking me quite quite some time to read, to be honest with you. <clears throat> a little bit longer than I wanted to. But you ever you ever read a book and what's up, James Billings? What's going on? You ever read a book and you know, yeah, you can fly through the book, but you don't get everything out of the book that you really want. So that's kind of what I've been doing with this one is. I've been kind of just reading it really slow because I'll read a chapter and a lot of times I just go back through and I read it again because there's so many nuggets inside of this book and the path to mastery is one of the is one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight that I just got done reading this chapter it's just towards the very end of the book but I felt like it was very uh, very important and I wanted to to share it a little bit with everybody and hopefully it'll bless if not anything just one person. So uh, let me uh, let me share this in a couple groups real quick. Give everybody time to hop on. Yeah, James, what's going on, buddy? You been doing all right? Thanks for popping on. Thanks for coming in and seeing me for a second. Sharing a little bit of your time with me. Come on. There we go. It's not wanting to work tonight. It's being grumpy. <laughs> it's being grumpy. Cool. So... There's a there's actually four powers that are talked about in this book that will help you on the path to mastery, and so I wanted to um, kind of go through and just discuss a few of them and and um, path to mastery. Let me write this one more time, and then we'll get your thoughts at the very end and tell me what you think. Because the very first one that we're going to talk about tonight is momentum and if anybody's ever read Darren Hardy's book uh, um, The Compound Effect he refers to momentum as Big Mo right and, and what momentum is and that's kind of the one thing that he talks about in his book so when you pop on say hey what's up let me know you're watching let me know you're here and uh, so I can shout you out I'll give you a shout out <laughs> How's your business? Business is good, man. Business has been fantastic ever since I left Live the Dream, man. I've had a lot of, a lot of different things going on, and I hired a coach and um, doing some things with the coaching and starting to get results uh, that I've been looking for for the last year. And things are good, man. Things are real good. How about you, man? How you been? What you been up to? <clears throat> Jesse Black. What's going on, Jesse? Thanks for watching, Jesse. Thanks for popping in. <clears throat> All right, so let me uh, let me share this one more time. Let me do this on my fan page as well. Nope. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and share these four powers that we all have. Got too many fan pages. Let me share this, and there we go. Okay, I'm going to probably read a little bit out of this book as well, just because I could try to talk about it, but the book actually um, is going to describe what I, the message and the point that I actually want to get across to you probably a little bit better. But in his book, The Slight Edge, Jeff Olson talks about there's four allies that, that you have. Working man, it's been good. He talks about four four allies that you have at your disposal. And so I'm going to read just a little piece of this little chapter. He says, The slight edge has many faces, all of them valuable partners in your pursuit of your fondest aspirations. On your path of mastery onto the success curve, you are not alone. You have powerful allies at your disposal. Four slight edge forces that once you recognize them in your life, you can harness in the pursuit of your dreams like four wild horses all harnessed to one single chariot. There are momentum, 
completion, reflection, and celebration. And so we're going to talk, um, I left MySpace. I never had a MySpace, man. <laughs> he, um, so the first one is you talk about momentum. And, and what is momentum? You know, a lot of people, when they start online with a business or they start anything in their life, they take small daily action steps, and those little daily action steps get you started, right? And a lot of times, it takes a lot of those steps to get you to a place where you have momentum, right? It takes a lot of it. It's kind of like a train, right? A train, it takes forever for that train to get going. But once that train gets going, that train has momentum, and it's a very hard thing to stop. It takes a long time to get a train to stop. Why is that? Because of momentum. Same thing happens in your business. If you pick a strategy, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, whatever the case may be, whether it be blogging, videos, doesn't even matter, okay? It doesn't really matter what strategy you pick when you build a business. Here's the deal. Pick a strategy. If you pick that strategy, <clears throat> excuse me, pick that strategy and do it every single day. Small daily action steps every single day. That doesn't mean you take Saturday and Sunday off. That means you work every single day. Small daily action steps. So if it's videos, and say you want to do uh, Facebook Live, for instance, since I'm doing a Facebook Live, do a Facebook Live every single day. You don't have to do 10 of them. Do a Facebook Live every single day. The thing about Facebook Live, and I totally recommend it if, if you're not totally scared to get in front of a camera, is Facebook Live, if you do it, Facebook loves you, right? You get a little bit of extra love. You get the reach, right? The Facebook spreads your stuff out way across Facebook rather than a regular uploaded video is not going to get quite the reach that a Facebook Live will, right? So pick a strategy and do it every single day. Once you do that, you're going to pick up momentum. What well, Big Mo, like big, like Darren Hardy talks about, Big Mo can be your best friend, okay? Momentum can be your best friend in your business. Yeah, there is YouTube Lives as well. Yeah, if I'm, um, I'm still, I still haven't quite got on YouTube Live, but um, I'm probably going to get me another device so I can go ahead and get two of them going. <laughs> but you have to get momentum in your business. Once you get momentum started in your business, it's going to be really hard to stop, right? That's when the leads will start flowing. That's when the sales start popping in because you have momentum. You have momentum. You have a daily routine every single day, and it's hard to stop momentum. It's kind of like the story between the tortoise and the hare. You know, who won the race? You know, they say steady won the race, but it really wasn't steady. It was momentum. That tortoise had momentum. He got going and just never stopped. So steady won the race, right? He was steady, steady pace, just constantly going, going and going and going. And because he did that and didn't stop, he was able to win the race. See, here's the thing. If you do videos for about a week and then you get bored with doing videos because you're not seeing results, and then all of a sudden you decide, hey, I'm going to go to Instagram because I saw a cool Instagram training. Well, now you go to Instagram and you do that for a week or two and you don't get no results, and then you all go to do Facebook and you bouncing around from thing to thing to thing to thing, you're not giving yourself time to pick up momentum in your business. You have to give yourself time to get that momentum. So you have to do your daily action steps every single day. And once you get those daily action steps going every single day, that's how you pick up momentum. And momentum can be your very best friend if you do just that. So let's talk about the second power. The second power is the power of completion. <clears throat> Clear out your, these are some notes I wrote. Clear out your undones and incompletes. Okay? Clear out your undones and incompletes. And there's a, there's a paragraph in this book I wanted to read because it really kind of kind of broke it down for me and kind of made me kind of made me see things in a different light. And, he write, and Jeff Olson writes in his book, he said, Here's the unfortunate and powerfully destructive truth of being incomplete. It keeps the past alive. It says, Remember, people who live on the success curve are pulled by the future. Right? 
pulled by the future. So if you're successful, you're not worried about what's behind you. You're worried about what you're doing to create a future for you. And that's what he's saying here. People who live on the success curve are pulled by the future, while those who dwell on the failure curve are pulled by the past. They're worried about what the failures they've had in their life instead of worried about what's ahead of them. A surefire way to be forced to live as a prisoner of your past is not to complete things. Have you ever have you ever started something and never finished it? Right? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We all have, right? You start a project and you don't finish it. Right? That drives me crazy. I've done it too and it drives me crazy. I've done projects like around my house. I get started working on something and then something else happens and I have to get pulled from it, right? Drives me absolutely batty, right? Because I'm I'm the type of person that it's a little ADD. I want to make sure it's done. I want to make sure it's done right. And so if I get pulled away from it, then it drives me crazy that I see I'm looking at an unfinished project. Like right now, um, if you've been following me, I'm in the middle of a kitchen remodel. It's driving me crazy because I'm very limited on the time I can actually work on it. So I got some cabinets done, some don't. Saturday, I, I spent Saturday, I said, well, you know, I'll go ahead and spray my doors. Now my, my sprayer is not working, so my paint sprayer. So I went and bought a new one. I was like, crap on it. I'm going to go buy me a new one. I went and bought a new paint sprayer. It's not working. So I don't know if I got a paint issue, <laughs> compressor issue, but I got issues, right? So I was uh, like frustrated because I spent four hours and got nothing done. And that drives me crazy. It was like I'm wasting my day because I have other things I could have been doing. Completing things. Make sure you complete your task. Complete things. It's not easy to do all the time to complete things, right? A lot of times, things pop up. Things happen in your life. What's up, Noel? Thanks for popping in, man. You have to complete things, though. If you start a project, be sure to finish your projects. Be sure to finish them. Because the thing about it is, the power of completion is one of the powers that you have. If, you, if you're able to complete tax, that's going to be one power you have on the road to being, <clears throat> to mastery. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me give me a drink of water. Let's talk about the third one. That's the power of reflection. And um, a lot of times, I think when it comes to reflection, that a lot of people spend their day busy, but they don't get nothing done. Can you agree with that or disagree with that? Like it, get, shoot me some likes, loves, comment, do whatever you gotta do. But a lot of people are busy all day and got nothing done. How much time do you spend going through your email every day? I used to, I used to get home from work and before I, I'd come home to get busy on my business, I would sit down and literally go through email like forever. And I would leave my email up. If something popped up, I'd go back to email. And I wasted so much time on email. And so now I'm to a point, it's sad to say, but I probably only go really actually through my email probably three or four times a week. I'll glance at it, but if I don't see nothing that really catches my eye, I'm not even going to mess with it. You know, I'm just, I probably, I probably shouldn't do that. But I, I hate wasting my time looking at email. I hate it. I got to a point because I was wasting so much time that I could have been doing productive things for my business, but instead I'm over here messing with email, you know, and I've gotten to a point where I don't leave Facebook up. If I'm working on, if I'm doing slides for a webinar, like I was doing slides for a webinar earlier that I'm doing tomorrow night, I had to shut all that stuff off because you get so distracted. But we're talking about the power of reflection. A lot of people are busy doing absolutely nothing. And it, uh, he, re he wrote in his book, I want to read this real quick if I can find it. He says, he says, in my business, I often see people that make the mistake of thinking they are being productive because they are being busy. He said, being productive and being busy are not necessarily the same thing. Doing things won't create success. Doing the right things will. And if you are doing the wrong things, doing more of them won't increase your odds of success. It only makes you fail faster. So you have to do the right actions. That is why reflection is so important. That is why 
the power of reflection is important for you in your business because you have to you have to sometimes sit back and look at what you're doing. What's up, Sam Rock? Thanks for popping in, buddy. You have to sit back sometimes and look at what have I been doing with my time. I've got I got these sheets right here that I got printed out. Let me black this out so you can't see. This is part of my coaching program. And this is this is what they call um, this is part of my coaching program. Um, it's a life-changing habit and ritual. 196 of a day. 196 of a day is this right here. Throughout a 24-hour period, there are 96 15-minute increments. And so on that paper, what I do is every 15 minutes, I write down what I did. Um, did I lose everybody? Yeah. Every 15 minutes, I write down what action I took in the last 15 minutes. Now, you talk about hard. That's, it's hard. It's really, I, the first week, I was just like crazy, right? Because it takes a lot of effort to do that. You know, you have to tote around with you when you leave and, and all that, you know. Because you have to write it down. You have to be consistent with it. But what that does, that 196 sheet, what it does is it makes you accountable for your time. Because the fact of the matter is, if I'm writing down what I did every 15 minutes, I can look back and go, man, I was goofing off, you know, watching TV when I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be in there, you know, making slides or, you know, prospecting or whatever, whatever I should have been doing. So a sheet like that can help you get on task. It can help you get to a place to where you value your time. To where you actually know exactly where all your time is going. It's amazing how much time we waste. But yet when somebody talks about building a business, the first thing you hear is, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. But if you start writing down what you do like every 15 minutes throughout your whole 24-hour period, you would be surprised at how much free time you honestly could have to build a business. And it doesn't take eight or ten hours a day to build a business from home. If you had a good two hours a day, you can build a nice a nice business from home on just two hours a day, simply. So the power of reflection, all it does is it allows you to step back, look at what you've been doing, look at your action steps. Are the steps that you've been doing, are the actions that you've been taking, are they productive in your business? Are you getting results from what you're doing? If you're not, maybe you need to tweak what you're doing and go another direction. And then once you do that, you can kind of fine tune where you need to be and the action steps you need to take to get on the road of success that you truly want for. And so that's the um, power of reflection. <clears throat> the last one is the power of celebration. And I like this one. Um, the power of celebration. What does that mean? The power of celebration simply is this. Celebrate your wins. You know, <clears throat> I had a guy who came into my team not long ago, um, fairly new to network marketing, and I, and I showed him I showed him a step to take. I said, do this and do it like that and give it some time and you'll generate leads. And so he did exactly what I asked him to do. And within three days, Generated his very first lead online. I got a message. Hey, I generated a lead. What do I do with it? And I'm like, dude, celebrate it. And so I posted it on Facebook. I said, man, we got to celebrate, man. You got a lead. You got your very first lead within three days of doing exactly what I asked you to do. And so you have to celebrate the wins. Celebrate the little successes. Even if it's just getting a lead. If it's your very first lead Good for you. Now let's work on getting that very first sale. But it's the little it's the little things you have to celebrate wins, no matter how big they are, no matter how small they are. If it's a win, it's a win. You know, if you go and you do a Facebook Live and you only get one viewer, that's okay. You got a viewer, it's okay. <clears throat> celebrate your wins. Somebody got value from what you're saying because they home you, okay? So celebrate your wins. And, and that's just the power of celebration. It's so powerful. So <clears throat> I got something in my throat tonight. So those are just the four things that he talks about 
that will help you on the path to mastery. He talks about these four steps, these four things that are going to help you create success in your life and in your business and whatever it is you're trying to do. And I just want to go back through one more time and go through them. And the first one is the power of momentum. Okay, you've got to get that momentum started. And once you get it started, don't stop. Keep it going. Keep it going. Make that momentum work for you. It's just like if it's hard to push a car, right? But once you get that car rolling, you can put a little bit of effort in and keep that car rolling for as long as you want to keep it rolling. It's just that getting started point that you have to struggle a little bit. Same thing in your business. If you get to a point in a place to where you can get that car rolling, if you can get your business rolling, start generating leads every day or every other day, if you can just get that little momentum going and keep it going, keep doing the action steps that got you to that point, because a lot of people get to a point where I got leads coming in and they quit doing what got them there. Once you start generating leads, keep doing those same actions over and over and over again, and your lead count will increase. Right? You have momentum. Number two is the power of completion. Complete your task. Don't leave anything undone. People that are on the success curve, right? People on the success curve complete their task. People on the unsuccessful curve do not. They leave them open-ended. You don't want to do that. Number three is the power of reflection. Look back and look at yourself. Look at the actions you're taking. Look at the things you're doing in your business. Are they benefiting you? Are you getting results from the actions you're taking? If not, you may have to tweak your actions to where you can get results, okay? That's part of business is testing and te testing and trial. It's trial and error. Any type, of, any type of business you're in, it's trial and error. You do these action steps. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you tweak it a little bit and you tweak it a little bit until you get something that works for you, okay? The last one is the power of celebration. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate the things in life that, that you have successes in. Everybody's going to have some sort of success at some time or another. When you do, celebrate it. Pat yourself on the back. It's okay to do that. It's definitely okay to pat yourself on the back and celebrate your wins. So guys, I hope you got some value from this today. If you did, please like it, comment, share it with a teammate, share it all over Facebook, tag, tag your friends with it. Look here, guys, I'm actually going to be doing a webinar tomorrow night at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be doing some Facebook prospecting and recruiting. I'm going to give you some really good tips on how to effectively approach people on Facebook, how to communicate with people. I'm going to be giving some scripts out um, for like the very first message. Like a lot of people get stuck on what do I say when I prospect someone? What's the first message to get them to respond back to me. I'm going to help you out with that tomorrow. I'm going to give you some scripts. and I'm also going to give you six questions you can ask to close a prospect out. Okay, to close them out, six questions that are going to help you go through that a little more smoothly to where you don't feel like you're, you're pushing your, your prospect away. Okay, because we don't want to do that. We want to attract those people to us. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing some Facebook prospecting and recruiting training. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock, if you want to get on that free webinar, there's nothing for sale tomorrow. Nothing but straight content. Nothing but straight content. Nothing for sale on this webinar. I just want to help somebody out that may be struggling in their prospecting on Facebook. And I know there's a ton of people. I used to struggle. You might as well just shot me in the head. I used to hate prospecting on Facebook. But once I learned how to effectively do it, once my mentor really sat me down and said, this is how you do it, Mike. And I started getting results. It really is not that hard. It really isn't that bad. So I just want to share that with, with you guys tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. If you want to get registered for it, it's a free webinar. Go to MikeWalkersBlog.com forward slash webinar. That's MikeWalkersBlog.com forward slash webinar. I'll put the link in the comments below so you can just click it and go straight there and get registered. I do have limited seating, so make sure you get in early and get registered tonight for the webinar tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Guys, I hope you all have a wonderful night tonight. Take care. Be blessed. Shamrock, I miss talking to you, man. We need to hook up sometime and talk. We need to chat. So anyway, guys, take care. Be blessed, guys. And until the next time, have a good night.